In the medical field, we refer to traumatic brain injury, usually through the discussion of concussions. Most people have heard of what a concussion is, and I would bet to say most people have experienced a concussion. There's three classes of concussions, from class one to class three. Of course, class one is likely the concussion that most people have experienced, where they get headache, dizziness, nausea, or vomiting, and then eventually the symptoms wear off. Class three would be where there was possibly a penetration of the skull into the brain and where there was some brain damage and these people are hospitalized or death can result. Those are more rare than the class one concussions. The leading causes of traumatic brain injury in the United States are, there's four categories. One is falls. So somebody falling, hitting their head. Two is motor vehicle accidents. Bodies are not meant to be in cars and driving and most people in a motor vehicle accident, when they get hit, they absorb most of the force of the shock. And so uh, that's another reason for TBI. Uh, struck by against or by something. So uh, I would say uh, football players are a great example of struck against or hit by something. And then assaults are the fourth group of head, uh, head trauma cases. There are four groups that are most at risk for traumatic brain injury. Men are the number one risk group for traumatic brain injury and likely that is because they tend to have more high risk behaviors, play in athletics that have more impact and they usually get in fights more than women do. Uh, they are about one and a half times more likely to get a head injury than a woman. Uh, the second group is age-wise is children zero to four. This is likely because they are learning their environment, they're learning to walk. They also tend to have the most severe burns to the head, which would also classify as a traumatic brain injury and they are least in control of their environment. So they're in the car, in the back seat, that kind of thing when somebody gets in a car wreck. And then the second age group is 15 to 19, which you can then correlate back to the group of men who are playing high impact sports and ha doing high risk behaviors. The third group is military. Uh, military uh, people have a really high risk of traumatic brain injury and this can even uh, be a result of not getting hit in the head. We know that mortar shell, uh, the sound of mortar shells and bombs can actually create a traumatic brain injury within the skull. The, the most recent statistics that we have come from the years 2004 to 2008. And these statistics are gathered from hospital and emergency room visits based on traumatic brain injury. Uh, their statistics show that about 50,000 people a year die from traumatic brain injury. 235,000 people are hospitalized, and about 1.1 million people go to the emergency room to seek care for a concussion and are released in the same day and sent home. So you can imagine that there are likely tens of millions of people that don't even go to the hospital after they've received a concussion. So the statistics on traumatic brain injury of a mild type are probably very high. Treatments for traumatic brain injury and head trauma are very lacking. The options tend to be more of a watch, rest, and wait period, especially after, uh, acutely after the concussion. Then afterwards, there'll be cognitive, motor, and sensory tests that are done on the person to see how their brain is functioning. Uh, and then as they move into the further stages of the TBI, there can be occupational therapy, but as far as structural treatments go, there's not a lot of structural treatments. So we're looking at now, the research is showing nutrient uh, treatment as well as structural treatments to help the brain function better after a traumatic brain injury. Neurocranial restructuring can help traumatic brain injury or concussion. 
by improving what we call fluid dynamics of the cerebral spinal fluid and um, giving the brain increased nutrients through this. So after somebody experiences a concussion, it's not just a structural trauma, it's actually a neurological trauma where the brain takes an impact and the biochemistry of the brain is changed, which leads to a lot of the cognitive problems that we see with concussion or traumatic brain injury. So restoring the cranial bones back to the place that they were prior to the head trauma is going to help with those fluid dynamics. It's going to help with the connective tissue tension that can, if not treated, result in headaches, brain fog, chronic sinus issues, the list goes on and on, neck pain after people experience concussion or head trauma. So NCR can really help bring the person back to pre-concussion state.